One of the things that I guess I bring into the conversation around sexuality is that I'm a trans woman and I'm one of a handful of, of trans people who are ordained in the Church of England. I think one of the things that's been really notable in the discussions that have taken place within the Church of England in the past five to ten years is the, the absence of trans voices. Frankly, the Church of England has probably always been in a state of crisis around sexuality. Actually, maybe not all trans people, as he, of course, he would see them, are um, more broken, more failed, more secondary than anyone else. And in fact, we are just simply part of the ordinary human spectrum. Trans people warranted a total of one sentence in a report that ran to a minimum 60, 70 pages. Lesbians, I think, warranted two sentences. Bi people didn't get a mention. And if, like me, you're a person who is open about who you are and you lay your story on the line, partly because you sense that that's what God is calling you to do, to have it erased, is an obscenity, actually. I think that what might be made available is actually a, a radical Christian opportunity to rethink once again what it means to be embodied, what it means to be gendered, what it means to be sexed. Because it seems to me that one of the constant problems in the narratives and the discourses of our current church is that it's based on a rather crude presumption on what it is to be a human being. That one is either male or female, man or woman, and that the full expression of masculinity or femininity is to be found in a kind of lifelong sexually uh, centred union. There is surely this extraordinary queering of the body that goes on in Jesus's faithfulness that leads to the risen Christ. That risen Christ is the one whose body is transformed. The body that is pushed out of the world, that is broken, that is exposed, that is treated as secondary and second class, is the subject of the world's violence, is transformed in such a way that that body still bears the marks of woundedness, of exclusion, of loss, of being pushed out of the world. But this transformed body is not in any sense simply the body of a first century Jewish man anymore. Without trans voices, without lesbian voices, without bi voices, without intersex voices, and of course without gay voices, there is simply no way forward. That dynamic between Christ on the cross saying, I am thirsty, and that visceral bodily thirst that those of us who are longing for justice and change have. And that sense of uniting our voices with his and his voice being united with ours. And yet that glimpse of the third day.